Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Mean Gene Show here on iHeartRadio, powered by Podbean. I am at the Westgate Casino, Las Vegas. Here, we are getting ready for the 2022 NFL Draft. I'll be joined here in a minute by my co-host sitting in here with me today, Rudy Reyes from the Root Dog Show. Got a treat for you here today uh, for you Green Bay Packers fans. We have former NFL tight end and Super Bowl champion from the Green Bay Packers, Jeremiah Finley. He's going to call in and talk with us today about his NFL draft experience and some of the things that he's working on now that he no longer is in the NFL. But hey, I have to describe, you guys know how much I love the Westgate uh, Sportsbook. TV screens and you name it, it's all over the place. So uh, very thankful that they let us come back here and do our pre-draft um, NFL show here for uh, tonight's draft. So uh, d- d- just trying to describe the experience here uh, in Las Vegas. You guys already know Las Vegas is Las Vegas. People come here to gamble and, 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 and whatnot. But uh, you just have a ton of football fans here from all over the place. Uh, ran into some uh, Panthers fans that were here and uh, some uh, Saints fans that just came up and talked to me a minute ago and some Minnesota Viking fans that, that came by as well. But anyway, uh, it's going to be a great show. And we're going to get Rudy on here. We're going to get Jeremiah Finley. But, hey, just stick around and listen and enjoy. Okay, once again, folks, we are getting ready for the 2020. Two NFL draft here in Las Vegas. I'm joined by uh, my co-host today, Rudy Rudolph. How are you doing, Rudy? <laughs> I'm From doing good. My, my my feet aren't barking yet because um, the walking has not even begun. <laughs> not yet, not yet. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a long day. But hey, we have a treat for you. As we uh, previously told you, uh, we're so uh, grateful to have this man take time out of his busy schedule to talk with us today. He. Uh, himself was once a draft pick, so he kind of knows what some of these guys are going to be going through. Uh, let me give him the honors here. Um, he was uh, he attended the University of Texas, played for Mac Brown, and um, he was drafted by the Green Bay Packers, third round, uh, 91st overall pick. And uh, I know he'll kill me if I don't give him this credit. Here, how about he's also a Super Bowl champion? Hey. And uh, uh, he, uh, the Green Bay Packers defeated the Pittsburgh Steelers. That, they did, that Super Bowl Forty Five. And you got to know who I'm talking about. And, and, and wait a minute. And he was my favorite tight end that year because uh, he was on my fantasy football team. Oh, okay. Yeah, so he got folks, you some fantasy points. Without any further ado, please welcome to the show former Green Bay Packers and Super Bowl champion, Joe Michael Finley. How you doing, Joe Michael? Hey, hey, how you doing, man? Uh, man, living the dream, man. Living the dream. Hey, we are so happy to have you on the show. I'm so glad Rudy was able to get you on. So I'm going to pass the mic over to Rudy. And Rudy, have at it. Oh, hey, Joe Michael, thanks so much for, for joining us. I know you're at an event right now. Um, you know, speaking of living the dream, and, and, and Gene really kind of set the segue for me on this one. You know, these guys are always living the dream, getting to the next level. And here we are at the 2022 NFL Draft in Las Vegas, Nevada. What is it about not only living the dream, but making that dream a reality as these these young men in various positions uh, playing collegiately now have the opportunity to play in the NFL? What was it like on your draft day? And what is your biggest takeaway from draft day? Um, it, it was it was very special. Um, uh, one of the special things it was um, I, I was back home in East Texas in Dabal, Texas, um, spending it with my family. Uh, you know, me and my grandmother raised me, and so we had a good draft party at her house, and uh, that that was one of the most um, you know, I mean unique experiences I had because that's why I was raised at. That's great stuff. That's great stuff, and I and and. And another thing, Joe Mike, I have to ask, you know, have you ha- have you paid attention to any of these guys in this draft uh, so far this year? Because I, I think we got one good tight end that probably is going to go in the first round. Oh, yeah, he's really, really good. Uh, but uh, other than that, man, it's been one of those draft picks where it's very, very silent, very, very um, quiet. But um, overall, it's been paying attention to what Green Bay is going to do um, and what Green Bay should do. And that's about it. Well, when you look at the Packers, they um, they they came up a little short last year, literally. Um, Aaron Rodgers, obviously the NFL MVP now twice. 
uh, certainly yeah. deserving of that honor. There was a lot of uh, adversities. Uh, we had come out of a COVID year, uh, yep. or COVID couple of years rather, and he did a lot with a lot less. And one of the things that I really like about Aaron Rodgers is his way to, to, to fight through it. Vaccination or no vaccination, he found right. a way to play through it with, with the young crew, with the guys that he had surrounding him. Of course, they lost Devontae Adams in the offseason. Uh, going over to the Las Vegas Raiders, which is where we're at in Las Vegas. Um, where do you see the Packers, or who do you see the Packers rather picking in this upcoming draft to, I don't want to say take the place of, you can't really de- replace a guy like Devontae Adams, but who do you see as somebody that they're going to pick in the wide receiving group? Um, yeah, um, I, I hope they go um, offense skill, a skill group um, set, um, because once again, they've had a big loss and a big uh, bang when Devontae Adams um, left the Green Bay Packers. Um, so you need another playmaker that's go- that, can get, that can get points on the board, um, that can score fast, and that can create um, a mismatch and, um, and be a superstar in the National Football League. So I think the Packers should go big or go home. Hey, Joe, Mike, I got to ask you a question since we brought up um, Aaron Rodgers. And, you know, he just recently signed a big-time contract there. Uh, we were talking about $50 million a year here for a couple of years. What sort of pressures now does he have? Because over the last few years, you know, he's gotten there. And, and uh, you know, the 49ers is one of those teams that he just seemed he can't get past. But what is it going to take uh, for, for the, the Green Bay Packers or uh, Aaron Rodgers specifically to, to, to get back to the Super Bowl? Um, you asked me about the pressure on Aaron Rodgers. I think if we're talking um, – Real and uh, about life. Uh, I, I don't, if, if you're getting paid fifty million dollars a year, I don't think it's any pressure because you're getting it regardless of if you play well or not. So uh, the pressure for Aaron Rodgers is done. You know what I mean? Uh, the guy is getting paid the max of what any player has ever got paid. So um, I, I don't think you have any pressure if you want to be one hundred percent honest. Well, the pressure I, I think is more on the Packers organization to draft the right guys. And I, I've always said this throughout my tenure in, in broadcast that you draft the right players for the right position for the right reasons. And those players have to fit the mold. And sometimes you do have players in the NFL that find themselves outside of that spectrum. And you hear about off-season incidents, Henry Ruggs, the Las Vegas Raiders, you know, with, um, with, with his car incident and, and, and the killing of, of someone in the other vehicle and so on and so forth. What are the pitfalls that some of these drought players are going to have to stay away from in order well, to stay conducively positive in the NFL throughout their their tenure there? I, that, that, that's really good. I, I like I like that what you're talking about because um, I'm starting a business where I'm, I'm trying to get into the NFL and give these guys the car services and and the things like that. But the things that you're going to have to look in is that you're going to have to start digging into these guys' background. As far as where they come from, how they was, you know, what I mean, how they was raised, and and things like that. Because once again, if you go into the realm of life and give a guy that that never had money, as far as coming from money and dealing with money, and never had a father, which myself, just being honest, and never dealt with things like this, I, I think they need to build a program around these guys that that can take care of these guys where. You're not giving these guys a boatload of money in a 16-17 game week season. You spread it out during the course of a year, and I think these guys start to get invisible as far as the money and been has been very tangible. Hey, folks, once again, we are talking with former Green Bay Packers tight end and Super Bowl champion Jeremiah Finley here on the Mean Gene Show on iHeartRadio. And, you know, I want to piggyback on that because in this draft class, I just, I've just i watched a ton of film. There are some interesting stories. Now, we won't be able to see it because we'll be at the draft, but I'm going to be interested in knowing what ESPN is going to do. There are some, there are some uh, 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 draft players that have kids. There, I mean, there's, just, there's a lot. There, there's one uh, draft uh, prospect who lost his sister and brother to, to a murders. And now he's raising the, their kids. He's the uncle. So it's just, you know, what you and Rudy was talking about, it's just amazing. Um, it's just amazing uh, some of these storylines here. But uh, going back to your, going back to your, your moment, um, um, what, what was it like, though, just actually, you know, waiting to hear your name called? Uh, it, was, it was very, it was, it was nerve-wracking. Uh, but at the same time, 
uh, it was a it was a bittersweet thing. The, the sweet thing is, I was about to get drafted to the National Football League. Uh, the bitter part is, you you don't know where the heck you're going, um, and 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 that's that's the thing uh, that that stress guys out is the unknown. But I think you should settle in to this day's world and just say, hey, if you get to fit in the National Football League, it's awesome. If you get into the as far as a draft pick, if you go to free agent, that's awesome. Now it's all about getting your foot in the door and making something happen. Um, your first expression, impression. You know, a lot of a lot of young men, and I've interviewed plenty of them over my tenure. And one of the things that I continue hearing about are these guys, and you, you hit it right on the head, Jermichael, in regards to them having structures where there was no structure. They had to build the structure, and of course, right. having the opportunity to play in the NFL allows for them to have that structure, to build a family unit. I think that's right. more important than where they get drafted from in the grander scheme of things. It's the fact that they do get drafted. Matter of fact, when I interviewed, just as an example, Lamar Jackson, 2018, a 32nd pick overall by the Baltimore Ravens, um, You know, he, he essentially has a situation where he was basically repping himself and had his mom help him rep. He didn't actually have an agent because he didn't trust one. How hard is it for these young men to find someone who truly believes in not just a large organization to represent him, but the trust that must wow. exist between them and their agent to believe that they're going to put them in the best position possible? Absolutely. Uh, it, it's, it's hard, man, because if you think about it, you got guys coming from every angle, um, and especially when they know you're going high drop pick or, or if you're getting drafted, period. And it's very tough, especially if you, you you have grown up without a mom or without a dad, because you have nobody in your in your corner of support. You have nobody in your corner to to steer you the right way and tell you the right things to to look for. And I, I just think uh, th this time of day, um, I think the NFL or if it's, if, if it's a creator outside NFL should create like a player development. Not even within the organization, but within where guys can come talk to you and, and say, "Am I doing this right? Am I doing this right?" So it's just one of those things, man. The NFL, the NFL draft can get really stressful. Hey, Jamarca, how, how we doing on time? Are we okay for maybe one or two more questions? I told you, I'm living a dream, man. <laughs> yeah, you did. So, okay, I want to ask uh, just about your position and and how it has evolved over. You know, the last few years, what, what what what's your take on how the NFL or the teams, I would say, are using that tight end position now? That's different from when you played. Uh, absolutely, uh, it's different, um, especially with the the, the mobility of the, the position, um, where you can move a guy, you can move him over here, you can play H back, you can play fullback. Um, but I, I just think um, now now the tight ends have came where you got to get the middle of the field. And I think the t it, it was moving there once I retired. But it, it's a position that's much needed. It, it really is. Well, positions, when you're talking about guys, again, putting the right people in the right position, literally in the right position, is you don't want to play a cornerback in safety. They'll get burned out, you know, because they have to be all over the field, whereas they have to run on the sideline. And, of course, a lot of great wide receivers, tight ends, have played defense, whether, right. you know, albeit in high school, um, or maybe some in, in college initially during their uh, maybe their, their junior season, perhaps. What has evolved with these particular position players? We're talking receiving core here with Michael Finley. Um, what is it about the evolutionary cycle of who these guys are, and what variable skill sets do they have to bring in addition to what they've learned in college to be successful in the NFL? Um, I, I just I just think that the mindset and the focus and and taking the mental reps in and that's one of the things that I didn't do is when the guy in front of you was going I wasn't paying attention but now I think when the guy in front of you going now you should listen pay attention absorb it and take it all in um, and, and I think that that's what these guys are gonna have to do that's coming in now uh, because the game is speeding up and you're getting bigger faster stronger so. Um, now, now the, the field is, is, is a place where you can get hurt really bad if you, if you don't know where you're supposed to be 
Sure. You know, a lot of great Hall of Fame players, um, Troy Polamalu, to be a lot more specific, has a different kind of skill set. And he was able to sniff out defenses, uh, uh, excuse me, offensive lines and, and, and play calls. Uh, he just had a knack to get to the football. Um, something that I want to talk to you about is the Elevate U training. And you handle kids from ages 6 to 18 in college, um, getting ready and prepared for the draft. Tell, me, tell us a little bit about that and how has that in of itself as an entity evolved uh, to help get these guys ready for the next level, whatever level that is. Oh, wow. Um, it, it, it have evolved really well, man. I, it, it really shocked me, actually, because, once again, I got a 14-year-old kid that's he, not just because he's my kid. If I seen him somewhere else, I'd say he's a thoroughbred. Mm-hmm. And he he started me training and getting into, uh, you know what I mean, uh, detailing routes up, detailing my, the, the work up. And so I trained him. And I started doing things like that. And I started getting into helping other guys. I got Malik. Um, I got Malik here in the draft now, uh, which he got his brother Tyreek, um, also Tyreek Smith and Malik Smith in the draft. Tyreek goes to Ohio State, which he's a DN, should get drafted uh, second or third roundish. Um, but I started training them guys and giving them player development uh, around what to expect in the NFL. And it just took me off as far as like, man, there's a lot of guys out here that need help as far as knowing what to expect on the next level. So. Uh, LFAU has been an awesome program to just help guys um, uh, think ahead. Well, thinking ahead is better than being behind. So if you are the guy who's thinking ahead, you don't have to look behind you. Uh, All you have to do is worry about once you're in the NFL, you're playing four years, wait for the draft class because that person is going to be after your job. You just have to make sure you perform at your absolute best to make sure that that doesn't happen. Eventually it will. Because it does, the game evolves. People retire, you know, injuries retire people, unfortunately, in an untimely manner. Um, Jermichael, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for your time. Uh, enjoy the uh, the NFL draft from a distance. Wish you were here. Absolutely. Yes, sir, man. Um, a- a- anytime, man, you guys hit me up, and I-, I-, I got you guys. Hey, we appreciate it, Jermichael. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. All right, folks, former Green Bay Packers tight end, Super Bowl champion, Jerry Michael Finley joining us here on the Mean Gene Show on iHeartRadio. You know what we didn't talk about was the fact that um, he got a Super Bowl ring against, and, and me and Rudy both are Pittsburgh <laughs> Steelers fans, so we talked about that before we started. Oh, yeah, taping. yeah. I, just, I, I, didn't, I didn't want to share that with him. He said, yeah. I should yeah, have I actually think. known that. I was. I almost had my head in my terrible towel when that it was, happened. It was a bad year in Dallas in 2011. <laughs> it so. was, but don't forget, we had won one two years prior. So, you know, it's not as if the Steelers weren't first to six. I'm not going to brag. I'm just saying that, you know, first to six is a good thing. Uh, but, no, you know, there's another thing I wanted to talk about, too, kind of go into a little bit more depth in regards to – player management, right? Because we hear about load management in the NBA. Mm -hmm. We talk Mm -hmm. about player management within an NFL rank. Uh, These guys are coming out fresh. They're coming out cold. They don't have any idea. We're talking about the The, 2022 NFL draftees. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. and and these guys are coming in kind of ice cold, so to speak. I mean, they may have been around people to help kind of navigate them through this process, Mm -hmm. but this is not an easy process. I mean, mentally, emotionally, are they going to be drafted high, drafted low? This is probably, and, and I have to say this because this is my second Super Bowl, mm-hmm. second draft, mm-hmm. and from what I've seen is these guys are probably more aware of where they're going than they have mm-hmm. in years past. Do you see teams maybe taking some shock in regards to draft picks? Where does Baker Mayfield go? Does somebody nab him for upwards of draft picks? Do the Patriots, well, you know, I mean, what do they do? You know what, what do Rudy? They do? That's probably happening. I do believe a war room is a real war room. I do believe that some decisions are not made until right at draft time. I believe there's a lot of telephone calls that are happening, scrambling as these picks, you know, as you see that you're on the clock and everything. But I also think there are a lot of things are already decided way before. You know, like when, you you know, I, I wouldn't say as early as the combine. 
But well, yeah, let's take yeah, let's go to the combine. Let's go as okay. early as game film that these guys have watched in college. You right. know, the Senior Bowl. Right. You know, the, these scouts have spent a lot of time with these guys, and then the NFL and teams have so many resources. You know, you got one guy looking at you know how you walk and how you talk, and you got another one looking at you know your background and character stuff. They got all of these different resources, and I think by the time. You know, I, I think all of that stuff is out of the way. I think, like, tonight, if you're still on the phone calling, it's all about making a deal because you got a lot of free agents that are out there. Sure. And you might be maneuvering like a Baker Mayfield. Right. You know, what do you do right. with him? Right. Nobody wants yeah. to give him $19 million, right? Yeah. And, and <laughs> so what do you do with him? And then I think those are the things that are probably happening more last minute because the character stuff is done, and believe it or not, and the networks will – remind everyone watching mm. of all of the negatives you know and that's the bad part about the draft which we don't have to worry about because we won't actually have to watch it on tv but i do that worries me because we already know that stuff in the nfl the the, the guys the the teams know that rudy and I, it's just i think i think the teams tonight are going to make i think some of them have already made their choices and i think the ones that haven't are trying to maneuver and see what they can get out of this deep draft sure no and they actually can when you look at the from the absolute basics of what looking at these guys are and would be in their system they had to have done some research i mean scouts get paid maybe fifty thousand dollars a year to mm-hmm. scout well mm-hmm. their job is to look at film their job mm-hmm. is to interview these players their job is to make sure they get the right fit mm-hmm. for their for- team for the, yeah, right. To make the right selection, to make the right decision to get that selection. Mm-hmm. And if they don't, the collective finger pointing as to who and how and why, it's not and, the and, scout. And, yeah, well, yeah, the scout is never going to be the blamed, scout. It, right? No, no, not at all. Mm-hmm. But, but they should bear some type of responsibility. Now, with that being said, the organization themselves are the ones that need to look at themselves in the mirror and say, maybe it wasn't such a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm... Maybe I get to sleep at night. I don't know. The scouts will. Well, we've, <laughs> seen, all said and done. we've, we've seen that with a lot of players. You yeah. know, like, okay, what did you see in this guy? Yeah. Or, you know, what did you, what what made you? But I think, um, now I forgot to, to, to describe this one scenario. I do believe that even after you've done all of your due diligence, homework, character references, right. I do believe that, and you've made your choices, sure. I do believe that when you look up there and you see, oh, my goodness, no one has picked him. <laughs> And you you have to take the best player on the board, right? Right. You right. It, and that happens. You, you hear that a lot. Like, oh, sure. well, I, I don't. I think with the Cowboys when it came to uh, Michael Parsons, mm. or was it C D Lamb? No, it was C D Lamb because they wanted Michael Parsons. Yeah, yeah they did. Um, but when they when C D Lamb was there, I don't know if that's who they really wanted to draft that year. But when they looked up there on that board and saw that, oh my goodness, there's a wide receiver there. Now, granted. They probably have done the homework on all the players, you know, sure. at that time. Absolutely. So they know enough about him to say, okay, let's take him off the board. Right. But right. I think that do. happens, though. It, it, it does. And what's really interesting is you, you think that, you know, quarterbacks are going to be the first guys to get nabbed, and predominantly they are, right, because we know that you can't build a franchise without a franchise quarterback. Mm-hmm. A lot of these guys – I think the jury's still out as to whether or not they are franchise quarterback material. Not to suggest that they're not, but when you're a team, you play that gamble. You have Kenny Pickett, Malik Willis. Yeah. You have your your Matt Corrals. You, you have yeah. these guys that are on the top or tier, and they are. There's no mistake. Their mm-hmm. college numbers indicate mm-hmm. that, mm-hmm. but this isn't college football. No, no. This is the NFL. It could mean that draft pick is not for long. And they yeah. get shipped out in the first three years, or they're their franchise quarterback. We, we've seen it. As a matter of fact, the jury is still out on uh, 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 Tre- uh, Trevor Lawrence from last year. Yeah. So, you know, here the Jaguars have the number one pick tonight, and they had it last year. So, and you're still evaluating your pick from last year because you don't know. How many times have we seen quarterbacks get drafted that high, and they may not pan out. And, right. and a couple of years from here, me and you be doing another show talking about, <laughs> wow, 
Trevor Lawrence is in Buffalo now or somewhere right. else. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's, 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 it's crazy, but I'm glad you brought up some names because uh, have you had an opportunity to just uh, look at some film of some of these guys? I did. I, I did. Matter of fact, I had a chance to watch a lot of these guys in real time watching mm-hmm. football in the last mm-hmm. you know two or three years yeah. from yeah. a collegiate level. Yeah. Um, Matt Corral really impresses me. I like his body of work. He's got a quick snap count. He's pretty elusive. Uh, he knows how to scramble once he gets outside of that tackle box area. Uh, he's really good on the run and throwing the ball. I think sometimes he tends to get he tends to release the ball a little too fast, mm-hmm. uh, and that's on the run because of the amounting you know, the surmounting mm-hmm. pressure mm-hmm. that's on mm-hmm. him. Mm-hmm. Uh, but at the same token, yeah, he's he's top top three, top five. I see him getting off the board relatively soon. Uh, Malik Willis out of Liberty, yeah, yeah. Uh, that guy yeah. really impresses me. Um, and I'm not going to say that watching that video of him giving somebody who's completely homeless um, some clothes and some swag. I don't know if you watched that video. Yeah, or yeah not, I did. Gene. I saw okay. that, yeah. Um, I, I think that that was true to form. I think that just really I, speaks I, to who he I is. I agree with that. I don't think it was uh, choreographed or planned. I, I, I like that. Yeah. Kind of reminds me of uh, Najee Harris. Yeah, you know. yeah, Najee Harris. So, well, he he came. He basically lived in the same area I did in San Bernardino, California. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. He was in a you know basically a homeless shelter, yeah. and he slept on the floor. The respect and that guy. Has. I mean, he has he 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 has the it factor to me. Yeah. Has the it factor. Now, don't forget these things that these guys do off the field mm-hmm. represent who they are on the field, and I don't think people really put that together and kind of marry them. To say, yeah. you know what, this is who he is all the time. How yeah. many players can yeah. actually have that? You can actually put that marker on them. Do they have it all the time? Yeah. Are they the it guys? Baker Mayfield, Deshaun Watson, questionable character yeah. right. to right. a vast extent. Um, but when you look at guys who have came from very diverse backgrounds, no parents. Dr. Michael Finley certainly pointed yeah. that out. Yeah, he sure did. You know, he came from his grandmother only from the sense of he, she raised him. Mm-hmm. He grew up around her. Mm-hmm. So he has women's respect immediately. Yes. He yes. knows how to treat a woman. Yes. Okay, yes. so he has all those he, those types of uh, intangibles. But what separates guys like Dr. Michael Finley, I think he's a generational talent. You have generational talent. You've right. heard that term, That's true. right? Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. so generational talents. We mentioned Troy Polamalu, another mm-hmm. generational talent. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom Brady, generational talent. You have mm-hmm. these guys that have that kind of spin to them. These guys are like that off of the field as well. Mm-hmm. So whatever they do on the field, okay, great. So they're Tom Brady, you know, he's like the GOAT, you know, mm-hmm. with the greatest of all time mm-hmm. with seven Super Bowl rings. You can't really refute that. There's really nothing you can no, say. No, there's, there's, yeah. <laughs> to say that a, he's not a generational talent. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 but is he like that off the field? That's a bigger question for a lot of these teams drafting these guys. Mm-hmm. Because don't forget, Tom Brady – and his ability to look scrawny and meekly right. uh, at the combine yeah. was, <laughs> was was on if display. I, if I see that 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 film one more time, man, I tell you, I'm like, <laughs> you know, don't, you're not fooling me anymore. That guy has beaten a lot of people, like you say, he's got what seven. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's seven interesting. So hey, Rude, I wanted to uh, circle back on just the experience here since you've been in Las Vegas. You know, this draft was supposed to have been here in 2020. Uh, right after the team moved from Oakland. Correct. And then uh, then COVID-19 happened, so the NFL right. had to go do a virtual draft. Correct. So now they uh, re-awarded it, if that's such a word, to the city of, of Las Vegas. But what have your experience been like since you've been here in, in Las Vegas? It's a busy place. It's, <laughs> it's, it's a crazy, busy huh? place. There's a lot of people. Uh, matter of fact, <laughs> it started at about 9 o'clock. Uh, I just got off my plane. Mm-hmm. And trying to find a taxi, trying to find an Uber, trying to find a way around town, had to rent a car, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, it was real difficult. It was real busy. But I think that, and just based on, on reports, have you seen this report or not, over a million people expected to attend Las Vegas in general. It- Doing these next several next days. Next three days, yeah. yeah it's they, insane. Yeah, it's and they're actually breaking them down maybe like like over at the draft uh the draft forum or the, the draft experience, some two hundred thousand per day. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that's and that's not counting just your normal people who like to come to Vegas anyway. Yeah. And don't even yeah. like football. Right. Yeah, yeah. They just come here to well, 
gamble if you could find right. a gambling it, machine exactly. somewhere here in uh, Las Vegas. But you're right. 2020 uh, was the year I was actually scheduled to come mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was an hour outside of Las Vegas at yeah. that time, yeah. and I was I was approved to go. And then all of a sudden, here comes the bad news. The bear of bad news shows up and says, yeah. well, the NFL draft is now virtual, and I just was crushed. But with that being said, fast forward a couple years later, here we are yeah. amongst one another, maskless. Yeah. To whatever extent. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it, you know, overall, it's good to see people just out and about. And having a good time. Yeah, and just No one's down. arguing or fighting no. over this, that, or the other. Which They're is, just having it's fun. Great. But this particular city, so you saw the setup uh, where the stage looked like it's set up right there in front of the Bellagio. Right. And I guess the street, the main street that people lost, is that Las Vegas Boulevard? Yeah, correct. That many of us have walked or driven up and down a thousand <laughs> times but that is actually closed off right yes yeah and then i also understand that there's going to be some key performances i'm, I'm looking forward to ice cube friday night man yeah you know i didn't uh <laughs> I, I i didn't bring my iced tea uh for that one but <laughs> hey man, this, is, this is going to be just great and uh it's gonna and be then, fun rudy we also have to uh describe you know the sports book here here this at is the amazing. Las Vegas Westgate uh, Casino. So Ru- Rudy walks in. So I tell Rudy what to expect here because I didn't know he's never been to this particular uh, casino. But uh, he quickly found out why I love hanging out here. <laughs> this <laughs> is uh, <laughs> – yeah. I walk in. You have multiple panel, all HD, um, upwards in the length of, I don't know, I'd say 80 by 90 screens, and they're all – Diverse with horse racing, baseball going on right now. You have you name it. You had a myriad of things going on, and then at the very end, you see this betting board, and it gives you the over unders. <laughs> and I'm just I'm blown away. I walk in, and it's it's just absolutely mind blowing on how well lit this place is. Um, everybody's at their little respective kiosk, looking at their mm-hmm. the game that they bet on, yeah. whatever that might be. You, you saved me ten dollars because yeah. right before you got yeah. here, I was going to get one of these horses oh, okay but well, what happened? i got time though oh okay but tonight, you haven't bet yet. tonight uh they will have a few games on baseball of course and you just got the nba playoffs going with sure. it, which is another subject that's a whole nother but animal. the draft will be on one of these main screens with the sound sure. and there's going to be a ton of fans ton here. Of the ones that really don't want to be on their feet and hanging out um Unlike where we're going to be <laughs> they, they're going to be right here and this this place is really Super, and I have to thank uh, Mr. Gordon Prouty, uh, one of the VPs here of entertainment, or you name it. He does everything. He always takes care of the Mean Gene Show. And when I'm on KDWN, uh, 7:20 a.m. in Las Vegas, this is this is our home here. This is where, I, you know, if I'm not doing the show in the studio, we 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 come here and get it done. So I gotta ask, and you should have known this question was coming. <laughs> Who does the Jacksonville Jaguars take with? the first pick in the 2022 NFL draft. Well, I can tell you who it's not going to be, and they don't need a quarterback. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they it, definitely don't need a quarterback. No, it's going to be either on the offensive line to protect Trevor Lawrence's blind side, maybe a tackle, a guard perhaps. Um, but if they need anybody right now, it's on the defense. They really need to beef up that, that rotation for Jacksonville. Uh, I really believe they're going to go after an edge rusher or a big guy right up the middle. Um, they really need someone to anchor that defense. Now, I'm not suggesting that a guy who's going to get drafted is going to be, you know, a unanimous MVP, even though we've seen Micah Parsons do it for the Dallas Cowboys, yeah, uh, who had a fantastic season, but fantastic. NFL Defensive Player of the Year um, well, it went out to TJ Watt, as we know. Yeah, uh, but yeah. at the same token, you cannot take anything away from Micah Parsons. That guy is all over Ooh, the field. Man. Good pick. A hell of a pick. Uh, that was a fantastic pick. Probably yeah. one of the better picks from Jerry Jones that I've I, seen in quite in a some long time. time. In since, a long time. Since probably Troy Aikman. Just saying. Yeah. I well, could be wrong on that. Well, no, you're right because they haven't won a Super Bowl since Troy Aikman. Right. So yeah, you, since 95. You, you, you're definitely yeah, right. Makes you wonder. When you put him up there. Yeah. But, you know, uh, and, and you uh, brought up some positions. You brought up uh, uh, offensive line um, and then the edge. There are so many now. It's just me. I don't know if I'm just excited about the draft, but I, and I have never seen so many good players at 
playing the same positions. And I don't know if you if you Jacksonville, you can't really screw this up. Whether you go Aiden Hutchinson from Michigan or you get uh, Trayvon Walker from Georgia, and I'm trying to see what's the difference. They both are just spectacular. They're they're both plug plug and play guys. Yes, uh, Aiden Hutchinson is just absolute NFL ready. He's a beast. He's a nose. He has a nose for the football. I mean, he knows where guys are going to be. He's got quick speed, of uh, great footwork. He knows how to put together his swim moves. Um, he can get to quarterbacks. He can disrupt. I mean, Aiden, Aiden Hudges is just an absolute beast. So if you're yeah. going to go Aiden Hudson, you can't go wrong. Can't Trayvon go wrong. Walker, you can't go <laughs> wrong there either. The guy won a national championship you, you on can. that Georgia line. But there's <laughs> just so many great players out there. And then there's uh, DeMarvin Leo from Texas A&M. Yeah. The, this draft is so deep. And now as far as the quarterback positions we talked about earlier, uh, let's let's talk about our team, uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, we went we had a – um, a sad moment. Uh, among, yeah. Well, we had two sad moments. Actually, we had losing Ben Roethlisberger was the first one, and the, yeah. then of course nothing uh, worse than what happened with uh, Dwayne Haskins. So, you think the Pittsburgh Steelers were looking for a quarterback uh, prior to uh, you know the death of Dwayne Haskins, knowing they had Haskins, Rudolph, and Mitch Trubisky, and do you think the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to draft the quarterback? With with the uh, with the pick tonight now. with their with their twentieth yes twentieth uh, pick yes, yes they they, they are going to grab Malik Willis that is just my sneaky suspicion they love him uh, as they do all draft picks that they mm-hmm. want to talk yeah. to get to understand they take him out to dinner have mm-hmm. a conversation with him uh, Malik Willis just has I call it the it factor okay he has the it factor and I think they're going to now. By all means, there are other teams who need quarterbacks. That's true. Okay, there are lots of teams who need quarterbacks. You look at the Detroit Lions. They have a borrower in Jared Goff. Yeah. But, again, yeah. this is a Detroit Lions organization that really hasn't been known for drafting a great quarterback other than the quarterback that left and ultimately and won went to win the Super Bowl with the, but with the Rams. Having said that, do you know what they would do to this draft if they take a quarterback with the second pick? This, this draft is going to just go a whole different direction. It's going to crumble. It's going to crumble <laughs> fast because you're going to get guys who mm-hmm. are going to be picked off uh, uh, off the board real quick that they ultimately were holding on to, right? We were talking about Baker Mayfield earlier. Where right. is he going to go? He's also in, in the fold as draft stock, mm-hmm. draft capital. Other teams want to draft down, mm-hmm. but whether or not they will, uh, that remains to be seen. However... I think they'll end up getting rid of Baker Mayfield in a backup capacity somewhere and eventually earn a starting spot somewhere. And I think that could be Detroit. But you send someone to Detroit, oof, watch out for the tumbleweeds, man, yeah, because they, they could come rolling through faster than <laughs> they had a rough Matthew season. Stafford knows all about that after know, 12 yeah. years in Detroit. After 12 years. <laughs> I, 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 and that people don't understand. that It's not that first pick I'm worried about tonight. It's that second pick because yeah. they can go – they can really – send this thing just crazy spiral like now i will say uh and i've watched film on malik willis and i I hate to compare people but that's we find ourselves doing it because we have to make our point and i when i see malik uh willis i see a cross between a michael vick and a lamar jackson what's your thought on that he has he has a slash esque to him and i'd hate to use cordell stewart as an example Uh, of that last you know uh, quarterback to have that kind of esque in the nineties. I know what you're, t- you're saying. Right? Okay, you've seen mm-hmm. him play. Mm-hmm. I think Malik will end up, and they'll ultimately end up using um, a lot of different tactics to get him to do what they want him to do. What will work within his okay. his scheme, his set, his athleticism. Uh, and one of those things I like is his elusiveness. And, yeah, yeah, and, and and the fact that he can get rid of that ball in a very fast manner and drop some bombs and put it on a dime as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. yeah drop yeah, it exactly did, in the bread basket I, where it needs I to go. That. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, but can I challenge you a little bit and okay. say that here's the quarterback that I've been looking at for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm looking at because um, I'm I'm old enough to remember, or I'm just yeah old or. What's the word? Well, we won't talk about old, okay? <laughs> but let's just say many, many years ago, there was a good quarterback in Pittsburgh, similar to where we are now. He played great football right there at the University of Pittsburgh. And 
uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers let him get away, and that was Dan Marino. Uh And Dan Marino, had they drafted Dan Marino, he would have uh, replaced Terry Bradshaw. And could you imagine? Now, I'm looking at Kenny Pickett, and I'm thinking, do they let this kid get out of Pittsburgh? Because he plays there at Heinz Field, his home games anyway. Mm. He practices at the Pittsburgh Steelers facility, the, mm. the Rooney facility in Pittsburgh. And I'm thinking, do you let this guy get away? Do you let another great future Hall of Fame quarterback get out of your backyard? <laughs> You know, one thing, and I'll have to tell you a story. So back in 2016, when Kenny Pickett uh, started for, for Pitt, mm-hmm. uh, I had sent him a, a DM okay. on Twitter because I do follow, you know, some college quarterbacks okay. and players and such. Okay. And I've been known to do that over eight years, you know, give or take. And, uh, and I asked him, I said, hey, when do you have time to come on to my show? Okay. Which is Rude Dog Show. Dot com and uh, he says, "Well, I'm busy right now, getting acclimated to the system." I said, ah, "No problem, no rush. Let me know when you're available." Never heard back. Okay. Fast forward. Here we are, 2022, okay. and um, somehow we became disconnected on Twitter. You know how that works? Unfollow mm-hmm. stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then, um, so I just sent him a message. Once someone follows you and they have the ability to message you in a DM, they will always have that ability to message you on a DM. Yes. Even if they unfollow yes, you? Yes, even if they unfollow. Did, did That's not correct. know that. Yes. So I sent him a message. I said, hey, Kenny, how are you? Do you have time to come on to the show? And, of course, he's getting ready for the draft. So I don't really hear. I haven't heard anything from him so okay. far. But I do like Kenny Pickett. Okay. I like his familiarity. There was some questions about uh, how big his hands were yeah, or yeah. how big they weren't or who really cares. Yeah. Okay, look, there have been guys that have went through the combine. You mentioned Terry Bradshaw. Mm-hmm. Horrible combine. The worst combine mm-hmm. ever mm-hmm. went on to win four Super Bowls. Hey, what do you know? There are lots of other guys who have went through the, the combine process yeah. who didn't live up to expectations That's from that true. perspective. However, when you look at where they're at right now, you know, Tom Brady, unflattering combine photo, mm-hmm. ended up being um, you know, almost as many rings as he does yeah. fingers. Uh, hello. So, again, it's not what, a – What, sixth about, round, too, at that? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah, fifth yeah, round yeah. or whatever. Frail, skinny, yeah. look yeah. like he has, ma'am. Didn't see it coming. It's just, no. There was yeah. nothing nothing to indicate that he would be great at all, but ended up being extremely great. Didn't they say the same thing about Joe Burrow with the small hands? Yeah. Yeah. And, and there's a conversation. Where, where were the Bengals at last year? Did, did well, they get there? They were only in the Super Bowl. Uh, uh, well, I'm just saying. So that – you know, and I saw that. And this guy, yeah, come on, look, he's not going to hold a ball in his hand forever. No. The thing is to get rid of the, the ball. In the fast, <laughs> and, and, he, and he has Jamar Chase to get that ball, too. He yes. was relatively, to be honest with you, when I watched that Super Bowl, he was relatively ineffective. Yeah. They didn't target him as much as he probably should have, again, through the regular season. And here we are in postseason. Didn't target him. And I don't know why. They made no corrections in halftime. Uh, to basically put them yeah. in better, yeah. better positioning. Defensive calls were still relatively the same, uh, from sub three four packages to dime nickel. I mean, mm-hmm. it all looked relatively basic and the same. I think they were playing not to lose the game, but ended up yeah. losing anyway. Yeah, and that, you hate to see that, especially when you dominate. Oh yeah, you know? are you um, kidding? I me? had a chance, and I had BJ. Was it BJ, BJ? BJ Hill? Was it BJ Hill? You know the the uh, linebacker, the, the the one that picked off the. The uh, the pass from Mahomes to get them to oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. and uh, uh-huh. I've seen that so we we had a good conversation um, and I, I I don't know that team that team they 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 were so they were in the game and they still had a chance to win right there at the end and uh, it was just the Rams you know yeah. it was the Rams moment yeah you know I know. We have a lot of stuff to do here in the next couple of hours because <laughs> yes. we have to fight through Las Vegas traffic to get uh, over to the NFL Center and get situated for uh, tonight's draft. Uh, so I got, I got, I got one more question for you. Okay, who's going to be? What team is going to be the winner? In tonight's draft, Who, who's got the way too early question? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, look, we got to prognosticate, right? Uh, okay, hey, because you know, there's nothing like going back to the tape and saying, "Damn, Rudy was right." You know, there's a team. There's a team who did win it prior to the draft. Mm-hmm. One, only one team, mm-hmm. and that was the Denver Broncos. Oh yeah, yeah, 
Russell Wilson was a huge move. Huge. Or huge, whatever one you want to call it. It was. And then, and you know what, since you mentioned that, and it could be the Seattle Seahawks tonight that could be the winner. And I'm, I'm just saying based on what they do tonight. What I, I don't know what they got, number 28 pick. I'm trying to see where they are. Yeah, because, they uh, have Geno Smith. They signed him to an extension, which is not a gigantic oh, deal. I don't find that being any way remotely interesting. Not um, at all. Uh, where are the Seahawks? Seattle needs to oh, they, really okay. do They got better. the ninth pick, so that's critical. That's 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 quarterback. That's what I'm thinking. That's quarterback. There's court. That's, you lose Russell Wilson. Are you right. kidding? And There's, you and you stuck. With, is it Drew Lock? Is that who they stuck with? Yeah. And I'm sorry if you're a Drew Lock fan. I, you know. I, but in all fairness to Drew Lock, mm-hmm. he started to play some better football. He really last did. season. I was impressed with his but, reads. He was but, able to make those completions. Mm-hmm, the checkdowns mm-hmm. were fantastic. He looked like he was on to something. But the instability within the coaching system there, and that, ownership that throws everybody change off. hands, and you know, but it, it throws the players off too. It, it They're does. the ones on the field making things happen. Unfortunately, um, you have maybe him, Drew Locke, starting with Geno Smith in competition in quarterback. There's track. just no I, way they're going to be uh, those two quarterbacks. I got to think they're going to draft it, depending on what the Lions do. If the Lions don't take a quarterback, I think Seattle or maybe even the Panthers are going to take the the first because it seemed like the Giants were set in on Daniel Jones. They it, with Daniel all of Jones the, has not impressed me at all either. I mean, okay, look, he's okay, picking up the same thing you said though. Different schemes, diff, you fire GM, you fire, bring in two, two or three. He's on his what second or third coach. Yeah, yeah, he's you know. he he hasn't been given the right tools to help exploit his athleticism, to exploit his ability to scramble outside of the pocket to being Danny Dimes that we know. No, okay, fine. He doesn't have the wheels. We've seen him move mm-hmm. with wheels at times mm-hmm. subsequently, mm-hmm. but the fact that he hasn't been able to get the coverage up front, the right. Giants take an offensive, maybe a guard, maybe yeah. a tackle. With the, with, the, with the fifth position, and then they got, they got the seventh spot, too. Yeah. They got two in the first, in the first round, the first ten picks. Right. The Giants got mm-hmm. two. I don't think neither one of them is going to be a quarterback. No. I would be shocked. No. But no. if you're going no. to stick with Daniel Jones, then you, you definitely have to. You need protection. You're going to need protection. And it wouldn't hurt to get somebody on defense. There's a lot of edge guys. Oh, yeah. A yeah. Lot, yeah, absolutely. Lot of, but go, going mm. back to Seattle, they mm. need to re-beef up that line. I hate to say reset because they're not even on a reset. The Legion of Boom, they got rid of the last player in Bobby Wagner who went yeah. to Los Angeles yeah. to play for the Rams. So oh, they yeah. have a recreation of defense they have to go through. They're going to have some serious pains defensively. I mean, this is just you. on and on and on. But but to answer your question, mm-hmm. in the draft, man, that's tough. Gosh, the winners. I can tell you who the loser is going to be, but I can't tell you the winner. No, I can tell you the winner. The loser of this draft could be the Minnesota Vikings. Ooh, really? Yeah, yeah. You said that after those Viking fans walked oh, by. Oh, did they? Yeah. Oh, well, hey. I, <laughs> sorry you guys didn't hear my pick in advance. But <laughs> no, the reason why is because they have Kirk Cousins under center again. Again. Who cannot complete passes of 40 yards plus in a consistent manner, doesn't understand his reads, uh, has even less talent surrounding him. Um, he's a guy who knows how to convert third downs relatively well, um, but just not – He's that guy that just can't get you over the hump. Yeah. Um, so if, he, if, they, if they don't have the right if, – if they end up drafting offense, all right, I'm good with that. I'd be better suited if I was a Vikings fan for defense. Could be some trades and, and there you, with and that you, And you know, and you know this is extremely thick in the defense. I'm it not talking is. about the guys' legs and the thighs. We're oh, talking, yeah. you know, these guys are big beasts, yeah. especially you're talking yeah. the defensive yeah. side of the ball yeah. for any NFL team. Uh, but these guys are going to have to rebuild from defensively uh, being able to get after quarterbacks, especially in that NFC North. So, unfortunately, they're going to stick with Minnesota, with the Minnesota Vikings as my loser. Okay. My, my winner, depending on who they pick, could be the Jaguars because they need the protection to keep Lord, uh, Trevor Lawrence upright. 
Yeah, you know, they 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 got the first pick there, and then they come back in the second round with the first pick as well. So mm-hmm. they're going to get quality, you know, 33, top 33 players there. They get a chance to get two of them. Pick of the litter. Yeah, they, they really do. Mm-hmm. Rudy, man, this has been great uh, hanging out here with you at the Westgate Las Vegas Casino, the sports book, getting ready for the – uh, 2022 NFL Draft. And Rudy, man, let my listeners here to the Mean Gene Show on iHeartRadio, let them know what you're working on here because, hey, I know Rudy is way more busier than I am, guys. <laughs> and and Rudy has – he's got his hands in everything. On. So share that with us. Well, we... um, I have three shows. <laughs> when yes, do I have do. time to sleep? I don't know. Uh, one is called The Hot Minutia uh, with me and Barry Long. Okay. I have the RudeDogShow.com with Kim yeah. Francis, brand new co-host. Uh, everybody throw her a follow, would you? Uh, and then I am brand new to Believe at B-L-E-A-V with a Pirates baseball podcast. Yeah. And yeah. that is set to kick off real soon. Now, to go back to what you were saying, the show that I'll be on with Kim Francis will be on Amazon and Roku. Oh, good job. In a live show. Okay. So throw us a follow. And we're going to have a you know okay. like button, all that good stuff on Facebook. You, you can follow me on Twitter, at Rude Dog Reyes. There you go. Um, and then you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Good grief. I, I just want to say that <laughs> you, you guys out there listening, you know, he, he, he's, got, he's got the voice. He's got the looks, too. <laughs> you, you, you know? Too kind. Too hey, kind. I'm just saying, kind. you know, because you. you got the face for TV. See, I, I, something I, that I don't have. <laughs> But not, not necessarily. You're, you're selling yourself short. No, that's not entirely but true. It's just been so great to see how much work and effort. And then you still have time to respond to my texts and emails with all of this stuff you got going yeah, on, man. Yeah. This is great stuff. But I'm so glad you you uh, you came down and, and hung out with me. And, and definitely. Thanks for having me. Uh, thanks for getting Jeremiah Finley, folks, because this is, this is the rude dog. The rude dog told me he was coming on the show, but he said, not just me, Mean Gene. I'm bringing a guest. I'm like, ooh, now. No, I didn't say that. And when he said Jeremiah Caffinley, I just shut up. I said, okay. Hey, hey, whatever you want to talk about, you bring him on. And uh, we want to thank Jeremiah Caffinley for taking time out of his business schedule. You know what? He said he's living the dream. He he, he is. Yeah. He truly is. I could tell. And could tell. if he doesn't sleep, he's still living the dream. Yeah. Awake, asleep, Great. coffee. Whatever, he's living the dream. And when so I meet him, we're going to talk about that Super Bowl. 45, yeah. I think it was. I, I, yeah, yeah, Super Bowl 45. Yeah, we're going to talk about yeah. that Super Bowl. We're going to have to bring that up. <laughs> I, I should have did it now because it's going to be tougher to talk to him about that in face. He's a big guy, right? Di- yeah, yeah. He's, <laughs> I should have kind of took my tall, jab tall guy. today. Yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> keyboard warrior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So anyway. But thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's been great. Gene. Thank you, man. And, um. It was nice meeting your fiance. You better give her a shout out. Oh, no, if yeah. fiance, wherever Where, she is, maybe she's, she's, she's finding she's a, winning you money. A slot. If she she's finds good, me money, then yeah, I guess we winning. may end up moving here or something. I don't know. There you go. <laughs> so, hey, folks, um, watch the draft tonight. And, of course, there's going to be coverage all over the yin yang. Wish you were here. You still got time to get to Las Vegas. Maybe not for tonight, but the draft will take place. Up until Saturday, but you definitely the first round is the fun round. The second round is even better, I think. And uh, but hey, uh, we're gonna get out there in the streets of Las Vegas and get ready for the draft. Hope you enjoy this show. And of course, I'm sorry. I, I promise you, the NBA playoffs. I know they're going on, but I cannot. I I, I just I can't. I don't know if I'm gonna get a chance to see any NBA games tonight at all. <laughs> well, I can tell you this much. Just in case you didn't know. Milwaukee's going on to face the Boston Celtics as they have taken care know. of the Heat yesterday. That I do know. And I know that the Golden State Warriors oh, the Bulls, are also me. going yeah. on. Yeah, Golden State uh, moving Warriors. Moving forward. Mm-hmm. And um, what a hell of a team. But uh, you guys know that Dustin Pfeiffer, who covers the Charlotte Hornets and the Carolina Panthers, we'll be talking uh, second round NBA playoffs uh, as soon as I get out of Las Vegas. I'm just not a good multitasker. I'm sorry. I'm not like Rudy. Okay? <laughs> I got to deal with one thing at a time. But anyway, hope you enjoy the NFL draft tonight, and uh, I'll see you back on the next Mean Gene show on iHeartRadio, powered by Podbean.